Okay, so we're zoomed in and I have my tape on, so let's get going. All right, so I thought I would branch out and I'm going to use my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. And I'm just gonna take my fingers and dab into it. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that as my eye base. And I, again, like this one over some of the others because it takes out a lot of the bluing on my lid. So this is going to be my first impression, as I mentioned, of the Osmosis CC Cream and some of their eyeshadows. All right. Okay, so we have primed our lids with our soft ochre. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and take the Osmosis eyeshadow and I'm going to take the lightest one. Well, maybe I'll take I'll take the creamier one. Okay, we're going to take this one here, the creamier one, and I'm just going to take a, an elf brush and dab it in there. Maybe I'll mix it with the white. I'm going to take the two and mix them. Tap it off, and I'm just going to set the ochre because I want a smooth canvas. And just by putting a little bit of eyeshadow that's a neutral color on helps to create that for us. So I'm going to take my most favorite Tom Ford blending brush and we will start with the peach in this pack. Now when I put my brush, I hope you can see that, there is some kick up, dust, whatever you want to call it, fallout. But you know, I, um, I don't get really crazy about that tap off because mm, lots of eyeshadows are gonna do that. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and start in small little strokes, applying that into my crease area. If you need a little more help, bend your head back because I do. And I'm just gonna go with little bits at first to see how these work. Just going to keep building that up a little bit. And then I'm going to sweep it up a little on the edge like I always do. This is not going to really be a tutorial, my friends. We're just seeing how we like these shadows. Okay, so very neutral in color, which is what I want in my crease area because I want to start uh, building that up and then these are like transition colors so I never really want them to be super pigmented or okay so that is the beginning all right so so far I'm okay with these tap it I'm gonna do the other eye and I'll be right back okay so that's just my first layer and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go right in with the second color here. I'm afraid this one will be too cool for me, but we're going to try it. Let's try it. Let's just, let's try to get all these colors on our eyes today. We'll, we'll just, that's how we're going to work. So I'm going to take a smaller brush. This is a Morphe M411. And I'm going to tap into that because I can always fix this if it turns out to be a little too cool for me. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that and tap it off and just go right in the crease with that. I'm not gonna lift up with this one. We'll try to use them all, why not, right? Hmm. All right, let's just build this here. Okay. It's very, 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 I mean, I can see the difference. It's very, very, very light. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye. Let's go in with the next color, and this is going to be more my, uh, I'm getting back in my own lane here with the uh, these colors. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply that right on the outer part, most of it. Let me switch back. I want to switch back to my Tom Ford brush for this. Okay. Okay. 
Just keep building that color up. Okay, I'm going to take it right out to the edge. I'm going to really build that up. I want most of that on my lid area. Okay. All right, so there's that. Now I'm going to take just a fluffy brush and I'm going to soften the edges of that, those colors. I'm just working on the edges here. I'm not really going down on the lid at all. Okay, now we're going to take the last color and I'm going to work with a dome brush first. And this is more of a burgundy-ish red. So we're going to take that, tap it down, and I'm just going to sweep it on the lower part here. I think I'm going to tie a little satin finish into the center of this look. Okay, so same thing on the other eye. Okay, so I just built up on the outer edge, really strong with that burgundy-ish color, flaring it out. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in with that brush and I'm going to soften the edges just slightly. Okay, so now we, we may as well, we'll tie in that white because I said I was going to use them all. So I will just take, I'm just going to take a little fluffy brush and I'm going to take the white. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of that it's the white with a little bit of the bone color and we will place it right up underneath my brows. Okay, and then I'm just going to sweep with that. And I'm going to sweep over just to make sure I have no harsh edges. Okay, so there's that. All right, so let's remove our tape and move forward. Now I'm kind of on the fence here. Do I use my primer or don't I? When I used to use my Rachel K CC cream, which I feel was the best in the whole world for camouflaging pores, um, it was perfect. Now this is considered a, let's see what this says. This is a CC cream color correcting foundation. So it doesn't really say anything about addressing pores. So what I'm going to do is I will do half of my face with my Algenis pore correcting anti-ager. I'm just going to sweep it up on the whole half here. And we'll see how it plays on naked skin and how it plays on primed skin. Because like I said, a lot of CC creams do address your pores. This one doesn't, I, well I don't see where it says. I didn't really look closely, I should have. Anyway, now the concept of this one is a little bit different from what I understand. So, uh, I didn't choose it yet, but I have opened it. And what I'm going to do in this tutorial, which is something I never really do, I'm going to do my makeup and then at the end of the day, I'm going to come back and we're going to take a look at how it holds up, okay? So for now, I got the Osmosis CC Cream in Warm. It says it softened, lifts, and illuminates. Well, if it lifts, I'll be buying it by the gallons because these jowls are just driving me nuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a squirt. I'll take two squirts. And it comes out a very neutral color. And it almost seems like it has little tiny beads in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm not really going to rub it together in my hands. I'm going to place it on my face because I think this the concept is when you put it on, you kind of release the tone. And then we're just going to go ahead and apply it. And right now I can tell you it's very light coverage. It's not going to do much for those who need coverage but we'll see if it's buildable. I'm not going to put it up underneath my eyes because I'm going to be trying the By Terry. All right, let's just do this. All right, let me run it down my neck a little bit because I think it's a little warmer than my skin. And let's just go ahead. Okay, so there is one application 
And then I'm going to pat it so I don't have any finger marks. And most CC creams I apply with my fingers, so that's why I'm using my fingers. Now, somebody may want to use a brush. Some may want to use a sponge. Okay, how does it feel on my skin? It, it feels like I have, right now, um, like a veil on my face. Not, not, just like I have something on my skin. Okay, so I'm just going to take a look right here. Okay. okay, so for pores, it did absolutely nothing, okay? Um, I'm going to look in my mirror here. Yeah, my pores are all right there. Um, it didn't even, it's not even covering the pores. I mean, it's actually accentuating the pores on this side, which when I use my Algenis, I don't normally have. So for pores, I think you're going to need a pretty good primer underneath this if that is your issue. So, and it gives you a very, very light coverage, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and do another two pumps, and we're going to see how another layer builds up on this, okay? You can see as you rub it in, the color then turns different. Now, this may not be the perfect color for me. Um, I just, you know, this is what I got. I want to stay away from my underarm, uh, underarms. Yeah, we'll stay away from my underarms. <laughs> okay, so let's rub the forehead in. And I'm going to go ahead down my neck. Okay, so again, we're going to pat it in. It did build up, okay? It did build up. Okay, so I can see in my viewfinder and in my mirror that it did build up somewhat. Uh, again, did nothing for the pores. My pores are all there front and center, okay? So um, first impression, it's great if you're, light, if you're somebody who really likes a light coverage. It and does give a nice glow, but this is without powder and I will have to powder this. Um, it does, I have to be honest, uh, right now, I'm having a little bit of a tingling sensation right through here and right on this lower part of my face. I'm having a little bit of a tingling and um, I feel a little bit in my nose too. Now, I, I didn't do any super duper treatments or anything like that to my skin um, because I'm going to be doing another video on the Dermaflash. So I didn't want to exfoliate any skin off or do my peach fuzz or anything like that. So um, I am feeling a little something going on. It's not on my whole face, but it is, it is um, on this side. It's interesting because I don't have a primer on this side. So anyway, that being said, the finish of it is pretty nice, um, but uh, no, it's not giving great coverage if you need a lot of coverage. This is for more for a natural look. Okay. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is put my concealer on and this is the By Terry. Now I've tried this several times and I always, the colors were always wrong. It would gather. So that's why I didn't really want to put anything underneath my eyes. All I have is my normal eye cream, which is what I wear under all my concealers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put some of this concealer on because I hear people rave about this and then I hear people not, not rave about it. So um, they sent me some new beauty um, blenders also. So I had purchased these a long time ago, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. So I'm gonna tap that in. And for today, I've decided that the powder I'm going to use, uh, I've had the By Terry Hyaluronic Acid Powder for a very long time. And I'm gonna go ahead and use her powder with it. And uh, this is still a little too bright for underneath my eyes, so I'm going to pull it down on this side. Let me get my mirror. All right, so I'm going to tap with my finger just to warm it up and see. Okay, and then this side. There is the concealer. So now I'm going to take the By Terry Hyaluronic Acid Powder. I'm going to take my beauty blender just like I would for everything else and I'm going to tap some of that on. 
I'm going to go ahead and touch that down so that there's no creasing and I'm going to use her powder to set her concealer okay and we shall see all right so I'm going to pat that down I'm not real crazy about the by Terry powder at all. Okay, so you can see by adding the by Terry hyaluronic acid powder, it is a little bright underneath my eyes, but we're going to go with it for now. All right, so they did send me the Osmosis. This is the Naturalize Pressed Base. I think this might be a little too light, but I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try it because I can always warm it up with the um, bronzer. So this. I, I, I probably need a different color in this, but I'm going to go ahead and try it. So I'm going to take the, um, this is my Le Mer powder brush, and I'm just going to go ahead and tap this on my cheek area. I don't want too much powder on my face. So we'll tap this. And again, and then later on today, I'm going to come back and let you know how this all worked out. Okay, and I'm just going to powder the center of my forehead, because this is where I get oily and there and then I'm just going to take some extra put it on and now I'm just going to sweep down just to get a light layer of powder because I do want to add a powder bronzer okay much too light for me but that's that's okay because now we're going to use the glow bronzing powder all right I'm not going to contour I'm just going to use the bronzer and I'm going to use this, let's go ahead and use my lovely faux NARS brush. And this is the bronze by Glow in Sunkissed. And it comes like this. So I'm going to go ahead and tap this brush into it. I'm just going to pick up a little bit because I don't really know how this works yet. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start sweeping. Now this brush does shed. It is a cheap brush. So it is going to shed on me. I got to pick up a little bit more powder. I didn't pick up enough. Okay. So now we're just going to go ahead and add that bronzer. Okay. It is a pretty color. Pretty bronze. I like bronzers that stay a little bit. I don't like a lot of red in my bronzer. Okay, it's not bad. It's got a nice tone to it. And it's you can see by adding a bronzer, even if you end up with a powder or something that's a little bit too bright, you can tone yourself down just by using a bronzer. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit through here just to bring it down. And see the difference? Okay. I, I do have to look in the viewfinder at myself. I can't stand when I'm watching someone in a video and they're looking in, at themselves in the view, viewfinder the whole time. But when I'm doing a tutorial, I have to do that to be able to see. But I would much prefer to look at the camera because it makes me think I'm talking directly to you. Um, so uh, forgive me for having, I'm working off of that. I do have a mirror down here, but I'm trying to train myself to be able to do things with less clutter around me. All right, so I'm going to do the other side and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back with the bronzer. I'm actually not going to wear any blush. I don't think, maybe just a hint, maybe a little hint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my Wayne Goss, this is that paddle type brush, and I'm going to take that highlighter that's in there and I'm just going to sweep it lightly across there and just put some of that right on the upper part of my cheek. That's kind of pretty. I think I like this. Okay. Yeah, I think I like this. It's pretty. Very pretty. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm just going to take my powder brush and I'm just going to do a quick blend to make sure I don't have any harsh lines. I think this is something as we age we should get used to doing because our eyesight does go. And, um, we just have to take extra little steps. All right, so I might pop just a pop of color on my cheeks, and I'll go ahead and use my little cheapy brush, and I'm just going to tap that in. Now, this is very concentrated, so this one I do want to tap most of it off, and then I'm just going to go ahead and tap it right here, 
and it will help to give me the illusion these days of having a lifted cheek <laughs> because they're falling fast with weight loss they really are okay so I'm just gonna touch and I'm just gonna touch that right there and you'll see just by placing a little bit of it right there it kind of lifts my cheek up and brings it back into looking a little bit full you know I'm, I'm really kind of afraid of fillers because I'm very angular and bony in this part I mean my cheekbones are very very high and you know if you touch my face you can feel them they sit right there and I'm just afraid with fillers that I, I would look like I had two golf balls sitting there I don't know I'm a little afraid of it so I'm just gonna pop a little extra blush on here right now and we'll go with that okay all right of course I like to do a quick sweep over the eyes with the blush because that's just what I do. All right, so now um, I'm going to put just a little bit of color underneath my eyes with the osmosis. And I'm just gonna use a very small brush for this. I think I'm gonna use this, it came with, it's just one of those sponge tips. I'll take some of that peach first and I might have to hold my mirror up for this, my friends, so just bear with me. And I'm just going to touch a little bit of that underneath my eye okay there's a ton of fallout with that okay so be careful when you're doing that because because I have the tape on it kind of collects a lot of the fallout so, uh, so make sure that you tap off it's important all right I'm gonna take the brickier tone that's the middle one and I'm gonna pick some of that up and I'm just gonna go ahead and run that out on the outer part of my eye both sides okay and that's it for underneath there. Then I'm just going to take a brush and I'm going to soften that line. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my NARS Via Martelli. I know, I know, not Via Pia. And I'm just going to tight line up underneath here. This is a, uh, it's a burgundy, burgundy brown pencil. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the tight lining. Okay, I really like to stop and show you what tight lining does because if you're somebody who cannot get it, keep practicing. Pull your eyelid up, get close to the lash line. You're not going on the lid, you're just on the lash line and that upper lip that looks like your waterline. So you're just smudging those lashes. And I like to take it all the way over because it gives me more of a feline look, okay? You see the difference there, my friends? There is a big difference. All right, so I thought, let's add a little bit of color to this. I was going through some of my stuff the other day and I saw, I forgot I had purchased this green Giovanni pencil and it is number five and it's a really pretty olive green. So just to add a pop of color into this, I'm going to go ahead and just put it along the whole bottom waterline. It's very subtle and it just changes it a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to do my eyebrows. I'm going to do my mascara and I'm going to do my lips and my hair will all be out. So I'll be right back. All right, my friends, I am back with the final look. Um, I have on, today I used Jane Iridell, I used her Pure Lash Primer and I used her mascara. Everything will be listed and linked below for you. And I also, on my lips, I used Max Brick Liner. And this is the Osmosis. This has a, a matte feel to it, which you know I don't really care for. But I'm gonna see how it wears and if it makes my um, lips look old. Uh, I think the overall look of the makeup is nice. It's a, it's a more, um, it's a more evening look that I did. Um, the eyeshadows, we'll see how they hold up. The foundation, as I mentioned, it doesn't really do a whole lot for the pores, but it does give a very nice look to the skin. We shall see how it wears. And so I will be back later with how the actual makeup, lipstick, eyeshadows, and um, well, everything on my face pretty much is from Derm Store. So we'll see how it all holds up. And um, yeah, we'll be back, okay? See you in a bit. Well, who is that? Well, look at my little bees. Oh, they're both gonna get out of here. 
There they are. Where's my little girls? Hello, Lula Bula. Hello, Harley. Bu oh, okay. You got to put the camera on me because Harley. Okay, let's zoom out. All right. There's my doggies. There's my girls. Lula, Harley. Let's go. What you doing? Are you guys getting into some sort of trouble? Is that why you're all of a sudden trying to love on mama? Is that why you're always trying to love on mama? Huh? All right, my friends, I am back. It is just about two o'clock in the afternoon. I forgot to tell you that I put this makeup on at, it was around 7.15 this morning. Since then, I have been out and about. It is very, very hot here today. I also, you know, have the doodle devils to, to tend to. Uh, anyway, so I have not retouched my lipstick. I did eat my lunch. And um, I will say that my skin is itching slightly, uh, which it normally does not do. So uh, I thought I would zoom in a little bit and we can see if we can see any difference. So I'm going to zoom y'all in. And this is the finish of the makeup. I look like I'm blurry, but that could be because my eyes have just about had it with these contacts. Um, I do feel that the powder that I used underneath with the, um, oh, what was it I used? The By Terry. I do feel that it is too bright for me. All right, as I was saying, it seems like every time I get on camera, my phone rings. Okay, so I do feel that the hyaluronic acid powder that I used by Terry is just too bright for underneath my eyes, although it, I mean, it, it actually looks better on camera than it does in person. If I look down, it's like I can see the patch of where the powder is, and I don't care for that at all. So um, I guess to find out if I really can use this concealer, I'm going to have to play around with a couple of powders to make it work. Um, the Osmosis Foundation, let me get a mirror. Hang on. Let me get a mirror and check. Okay, as I mentioned before, it does absolutely nothing for your pores. Your pores are front and center on your face with this foundation. Um, there is no creasing in my wrinkles at all. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. There's a little caking uh, on this side in for, with my wrinkles. And uh, I don't know how to do all the fancy footwork, camera work, all that kind of stuff. So you'll just have to take my word for it, my friends because uh, I have no interest in anything but the truth with you. Uh, so this side, I don't have much caking. This side, which is my droopier side, I do have some caking. It has caked in the line here. It has not really caked above my mouth. However, I did not put a ton on. And um, it kind of wore off a little bit on the forehead. And it has gathered in my um, 11 lines here. Uh, I didn't put it underneath my eyes, so there's nothing to really look at. I think that it it held up okay. If, you ha if you're somebody who doesn't have much to cover, this would also be good for you because it is a light to medium coverage. As far as the eyeshadows, I think they've held up just fine. Um, I will continue to use the eyeshadows. Uh, they actually, I think, are kind of nice for a matte because they are a matte. I thought they were going to be really dry and hard and they are not that at all, but they did blend easy for me and they almost seem like they have just a hint of satin to them. So they're not a really dry looking matte. Um, and uh, the bronzer I loved. I loved the glow bronzer. And I will say that I think if I had the right color, the right tone, this is just a little bit too light for me. If I had the right color, it probably would be a nice foundation. I mean, nice powder. And the lipstick, okay, now I'm not the type of person that really cares for matte or long-lasting lipsticks because I think they accentuate the age of a woman's mouth. I will say that this one is a matte. It is um, if you're someone who has a tendency towards dry, chapped lips, you're not going to like this foundation, this lipstick. But it... Um, it's, it's very dry feeling, It's not, but it does stay on, and I don't think it really makes the mouth. I hate when you get that line that all of the, I just bought the new Dior, and it's going back. I thought, oh, Dior, they'll, 
they'll make it a little bit better. It's no better than any of the other ones that I've tried. So all in all, not a bad, I, I like the eyeshadows, I love the, um, the um, bronzer, and I will say that the CC cream for me would probably just be uh, something that I would reach for on my light days. I know and it's, you know, I'm a just, I'm just one person and it's a dry skin. Um, I like something, it, the wear of it and the look of it is actually nice, but it does nothing for your pores, which is very important for me. Um, and I don't think, you know, if I have time, I'm going to end this video now, but if I have time, I may come back towards the really the end end of the day to see how it wore because right now it is very hot here. We're in almost close to 90 today and it's very humid and I have hot flashes. So it has held up against that, but, um, nothing for the pores, my friend, nothing at all. So if you're looking for something that's going to give you good coverage and take care of your pore business. This is not for you. But if you're someone who doesn't have a pore issue, wants to go with more with ingredients that are kinder to the skin and you want a light to medium coverage, not a bad choice. Let me zoom out now. Okay, so I have zoomed you out for a reason. When the mail came today, I had two boxes. One was from Lisa, Lisa D. Lisa Lisa D1, uh, she sent me a couple of items, and um, but I'm, I'm not gonna show those, but I did want to show, I got a package from Colleen Rothschild, and you all know I've talked about Colleen's products over the years. I don't use them all the time, but I always have, like right now I have her, um, her oil in my arsenal of oils, and I love her hand cream, and I, I love a lot of her products. Well, she was so kind to send me one of her new ones, and it came with a little nighttime sleeping mask and it is her brand new retinal supreme night oil I am so excited to try this it is renew restore replenish while you sleep and it is by Colleen Rothschild and it is a beautiful pink color. I just love her packaging. I think it's very uh, luxurious. It's uh, very feminine. So if you're someone who likes to display, although you shouldn't always, your products out on your counter, these are quite beautiful. So I wanted to share that with you before I say, Toodaloo. Uh, thank you, Colleen, for sending me this uh, retinal product to try. And of course, thank you to Derm Store for being so generous with me, allowing me to try some of these products and share them with my subscribers. Uh, I'm sure they appreciate it just as much as I do. So thanks for stopping by. In the comments, let us know if you're using any of these. Let us know if you are using the Osmosis CC Cream uh, Foundation and what color did you go with and what is the wear you get out of it and do you have things wrong with your skin that need covering or are you using it as a light to medium coverage? Love reading from all of you. Thanks for stopping by and don't forget subscribe. We're anti-aging here. Be happy, healthy, beautiful, and most of all my friends, lovable. I love you all. Be zoos. I did want to say that um, my skin feels, and I don't know why, because there's nothing really in this CC cream that would make it feel this way, but my skin, I don't know if it's because there's something in it that is itching it, but my, my skin feels very dry and tight from it and it really shouldn't because it's just a, it's a it's a cc cream but like i said it it burned a little bit when i put it on that burning did go away but it did burn just slightly here now i'm feeling very dry in areas that i don't normally feel dry so let me know if any of you have experienced any of the itching or the uh, slight burning when you first put it on. I would be really interested in hearing from some of you, okay?